All right, so let's thread mill this hole here. All right, again, this is going to be a three-quarter ten. All right, uh, and we can tweak the pitch at any time, uh, but we're going to use a three-quarter uh, ten for this. So uh, what I have is there's different types of thread mills. So what we're going to use is a it, it's a single point thread mill. It's not necessarily a single flute. The cutter that I use is four flutes, but they're all in line, and that allows you to do multiple pitches with the same cutter. Uh, but they do make cutters that have multiple you know teeth on them to actually cut a specific pitch and that way you only have to do one helix or two helixes down instead of helixing the entire time sort of like single point threading so you can think of what we're going to do a single point milling and the reason i show you this is because it'll give you the skills to you to you know to cut any pitch or any thread uh at least unified uh unc or not unc but united united national that you need um, you would need a specific cutter if it was Acme or whatever. Um, so that's why I use a single, um, you know, the, the multiple pitch capability cutters. Um, I just find that it is uh, more useful, especially in a prototyping uh, environment. When you're in production, obviously, you're going to want to go with a thread mill that has a specific pitch that's longer, has more teeth on it, and allows you to do less. You know, the machining time gets re reduced. So... Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to go up to Machine Group 1, right-click, go to Groups, New uh, new Toolpath Group. Make sure it's Toolpath Group. We'll do this again, and we'll just call this um, Thread Mill, ID Thread Mill. All right, and you'll see now that I have a couple of these, I can minimize stock. I can minimize Helix. I could click on Helix. I could click on Thread Mill. I could click on Stock. I usually show this later on. Um, because this is not even critical right now. Not critical at all. Um, but as we get into, um, you know, multi-axis, you know, especially, you know, three, three plus two on the, on the five axis, um, or even, uh, potentially indexing on the, um, on the fourth axis, you, it's nice to stay organized. So again, you don't have to do this. You could go right from stock and continue, or you can continue different toolpath groups, you know, f start the trees over here versus over here. It's up to you. Uh, I would prefer that you do it this way for this example, just so I see that you can do that. Um, but I change the way I do that based on how I think I want to be organized for what I'm trying to achieve at the end. So ID thread mill, we'll go back to a drilling operation. We can select this uh, circle, the um, tap drill size for this. So um, although that's a minor diameter, we will have to override and end up putting in the major diameter um, for this tool path. Um, and you'll see where to do that. So we'll click that just to get a location and we'll hit green check. Then we'll get in here and we'll go to thread mill and we'll go to tool. Now I have my thread mill in here, but I'm going to delete that. All right. And I'm going to just show you how to make a new one because there's not a lot of thread mills in the basic library. So go to select library tool or actually better yet, just right click on the screen to create tool. And we're going to create a thread mill, go to next. And that is what a thread mill usually looks like. They're like that, or they're indexable on one side, um, so it's like a one flute cutter. Um, so we're, we're going to go in a UN, um, you know, thread form. We're going to go to 11 threads per inch. And the reason for that is because the size of the tool that I'm using, the full width, or the, you know, the, again, the, the pitch that this will, this will cut, um, max, is going to be 11. Okay, the largest thread form that dimension here okay and that ends up being um, a cutting length of 0.090 and you'll see what ends up happening okay the problem is if you like change this to one it's going to error out um, if even if you go to 12 you know it's not quite right you end up having to do the math and you find that this width works out to be an 11 you know 90 thousandths or an 11 pitch so if we do you know a, a one divided by 11 you get 09009, and that's fine. All right. Now, uh, the outside diameter that this cutter cuts is going to be 0.365. The overall length of this cutter that we're going to use is 2.63. The shoulder length of this cutter is 0.65. Okay. The shoulder diameter is 0.21. And the shank diameter is quarter of an inch. Now, the taper angle, I really, you, you know, you can put 45 if you want, and that's fine. It does not matter to me. Um, we're not going to be cutting that close. This cutter should make this thread without shanking out here. Okay. So we're going to hit next. And this is where you could put your, you know, you could rename it. 
Um, you can change speeds and feeds in here. I'm not worried about that for now. I'll override that later. So I'm just going to hit finish. And there is our thread mill. So the speeds and feeds, uh, you can leave that alone for now. I'm not going to worry about the speeds and feeds for thread milling. Um, you can move right along. Uh, this would be ID thread mill. But don't worry about it for now. I'm not, that's not the focus of this. When we get into cut parameters, number of active teeth on the cutter. That's This picture here is what an indexable um, thread mill looks like. But this pitch is fixed. You can't modify that. So if you're doing 18, that, that thing's only good for 18 pitch. That's why I like the single because you can do multiple pitches as long as the, the width of this is applicable. Just like a threading tool for you know single point turning on a lathe, there's different size single point threading tools for different pitches, and that's their ability to cut a pitch is, is different. So we're going to do one. The thread pinch is, is correct. Okay. Um, that would be 11. But if we change this, and let's end up doing the 3 quarter 10. So we'll just do 1 divided by 10. And that's 100 thou, obviously. And we'll go there. And that's our pitch. Okay, and then you could lock either of these if you want. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, you do the thread start angle, all that. Uh, allowance or overcut. Don't worry about that for now. Taper angle, if you want to do pipe threads, you could do that. We're going to go to wear comp for this. It's going to be an ID thread, and we are going to override the geometry diameter. So let's, let's leave that for now. I just want to show you what it does. We're going to do a right-hand thread, and we're going to go from bottom to top. That is kind of standard when it comes to ID threads. You go top to bottom too, it's irrelevant. Um, you climb milling versus conventional milling, whatever. Uh, it's up to you. All right. Uh, a lot of people go bottom up. We'll go lead in. That's all fine. Okay. Everything looks good. Uh, multi passes. This is if you want to work your way in. I'm not going to worry about this for now. This is if you want to like take 10 thou, take 10 more thou, take 10 more thou, and keep working. Uh, linking parameters. Everything looks good. We'll change that to two inches. And the thread depth is going to be one inch. And we want to go past uh, about 100 thou, but we're going to go past uh, 150. All right. So let's hit green check, and you'll see our tool path. You'll see that it goes plenty deep enough. All right. But let's take a look at what goes on. We'll go top view, and let's go to back plot, and make sure your tool holder's off like I have. And we'll slow this down, and we'll hit play. And we'll see what happens here. Okay. Do you see the diameter it's cutting? We'll hit play here. See the diameter? It's cutting the diameter we selected. That's a problem. We end up having that. That is that was going to be the minor diameter of that thread. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to get back into this thread mill operation. Okay. And we need to go back to uh, cut parameters and override the diameter ge or the geometry diameter 2.748 the major thread diameter. Um, now, the major thread diameter is three-quarter, um, but if you, I end up going to the external thread, um, and I go to 748, the tops of that, the only reason why is I like to stay away. All right. You can go to 750 if you wanted to, All right. but I prefer to just stay that 2,000 away All right, for now. Um, obviously, if they make the thread at 748, uh, you're gonna you, you could have an interference problem, okay? So you can't really go by the external thread specs on the internal thread because there's an allowance. But I prefer to stay towards that side on a, on this ID thread and work my way out at the machine because uh, these don't always cut right away. You know, you're not gonna it could it could be ten thousand difference. There's there's a lot of variables that can burn you, and this can this can be a problem. So. Just, you know, 748, you can put 750, whatever you're comfortable with, and you could comp it at the machine. So that's not a, that's not a, that's not a problem either. Okay, you could always take care of that, you know, comp the cutter at the machine, take one pass, see where you're at, comp it, comp it, comp it until it's in spec. That's up to you. Okay, lead in, lead out's good. We'll hit green check. And now if we regenerate this operation, you may notice it here. Okay, and you can get rid of these if you really, um, wanted to uh, you just got to watch out because the complex that doesn't like to, um, the complex to be on before it gets into circular interpolation uh, but let's uh, let's watch this in back plot and let's just make sure we don't shank out and we do not we look good all right we hit play you'll see it cut and it's just going to work its way down or up I'm sorry and it's thread milling 
And again, the only thing I definitely double check is top. Make sure you have room. There's our uh, the, the shank reduction there, and there's the main one. So we're good. Okay. Um, now, let's say you want to change the lead. You want to change it. So let's say we go to 20, uh, let's go to 20 threads per inch. That should be a thread pitch of 0 0.050. If we green check and regenerate, you'll see the pitch change. If you want to, you know, let's say go oh, uh, 10 or something crazy. You'll see the change. All right. So you can change the pitch very easily. All right. Let's take a look here. And we'll run it and take a look again. And again, it looks pretty good. The cutter, again, you know, you got to watch it because sometimes with these, if we go here, if we were anywhere near the max width of this cutter, we would have a problem. Okay, we're not. So we're good there. All right. We can double check and look back in our parameters. Everything looks good. Active teeth is one. Thread pitch is 100 thou. That's fine. Leading lead out is good. Uh, we don't need multi-passes. Multi-passes, I'll just show you that right now. If we do that, we do um, 0.01 multi-passes. We'll do five of them. And then we could run it. You'll see how it changes. It works its way in um, on the diameter. So if we go to top view, it's going to work its way from here to here. Just like multi-passes and contour, if it was programmed on the circle, the same idea. Um, I'm going to remove them for now. It's unnecessary for just showing you this. Uh, link parameters you could always change. I'm just trying to make sure I covered everything. I think we're good. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. So um, that is going to be ID thread milling this hole. Let's take a look at this and verify. One thing we need to do is we need to update our stock. So let's get out of here. And let's get into our settings for um, simulator options. And we are going to end up going to stock model stock. And uh, we'll hit green check. The only issue we're going to have here. Um, is going to be is we're going to end up wanting to run the um, we there's two options we can update the stock after the helix bore to reference these changes okay or we can just you know run it um, and run the helix bore with it uh, let's go through this and I just want to show you this so let's start with helix bore right click groups and we'll do a new toolpath group so see how it's on this chain here what we can do now is we can go into stock model and this can be uh, after helix bore and I'm gonna go and let's go to source operations and let's check helix bore uh, helix bore we can go to stock definition okay and we can end up going to stock model stock so let's hit green check and what should happen is it should give us a stock model that has the holes in it. Like that. So now the stock models are identical except for the first stock model. The holes are filled. So now we have a new stock model. So we can rename this um, Op2 or Helix. Helix for stock results. Something like that. So now, if we go to our simulator settings and we get into stock model after helix bore, hit green check. Now we have thread mill and we go to verify. Now it's going to look just like this. So we are actually looking at the results of what occurs. So if I maximize this and we slow it down and we could go to a little bit more on the precision side and we could hit play, you'll see the threads up here. All right, top view. All right, so that takes care of thread milling that hole. And again, if you have to change the diameter, um, anything like that, you just get in here and you can go to cut parameters and you could override the major thread diameter um, at any time. You could actually reprogram, uh, you could you know put draw the circle on here um, like I said, if you don't override this and we run this, 
it's going to cut to the diameter shown. So if we just verify this quickly, you're going to see nothing is going to occur here. Very little. Because the diameter being cut is this circle that exists. So if we get back into parameters, and we go to override it, and this is going to be 0.75. It's asking for the major thread diameter. And again, for 3 quarter 10 ID, that is going to be 3 quarter. But make sure you comp your way into that, because there is nothing here that says pitch diameter, which is what we're looking for. So y you're relying on this. So it's not, you know, if you do it the machine, great. If you are giving this to somebody, they may not comp it at the machine, you could reduce it here. And so they force them to work their way in. So I usually go to the major of the external, the largest, okay? And then it allows me at least 2,000 diameter to, in theory, to comp in, okay, to get on the top side of that. But in theory, 7.5 is good because the 7.48 versus 7.50 major diameters allow for a little bit of allowance, okay? So... We'll run this one last time, and I think that's it for this internal work, okay? Again, I mean, it's not super difficult, but it's really handy. So there it is. Okay. Now, we can, uh, you know, you can ch if you want to change the diameter you chose, or I chose in this case, the minor diameter for the threads. I went with a tap drill size. Um, for a thread cutting tap, not a thread forming tap, but you can go anywhere in the minor diameter range for the internal. On um, three quarter ten on class two, it looks like anywhere from 642 to 663, and I am at 656 for the tap drill size out of the charts. So anywhere in there is, in theory, good uh, for that. Then you got pitch diameter specs, which is what you're going to be checking uh, with your gauges, and it has a major diameter of three quarter. So you can work with that. All right, again, the tap drill size is what I put this one to, to 0.656, all right? And again, the specs for the minor diameter of this is going to be anywhere between 642 and 663, all right? So that is internal thread milling with a single point tool. I'll pause here, and we'll come back and take care of the external threads on this little plug here.